This is part three of my three-part interview with Frank Connexetter, the Vice President of Liberty Coach. If you missed the previous segments, don't worry. Here's a link where you can simply go to gadgetguru.com slash prevo or to youtube.com slash the gadget guru and just catch up. Now, it's a fact. Tesla has been a disruptive force to the automotive industry. Now, with Tesla's recent announcement of Tesla Semi and them getting into the electric truck business, well, the question is, how will this affect the motorhome industry? Frank has some interesting insight on that question. Also, autonomous driving features. When will they be coming to motorhomes? We discuss that too. We also talk about Emerald Coach and their relationship to Liberty and their new H3 product. And Frank will finally answer the question, why doesn't Liberty publish its prices? Stay tuned because that starts right now on The Gadget Guru. Let's face it, over the last 12 months, Tesla, who's, a, who's been a disruptive force in the automotive industry, is getting into semi-tractor trailers. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, it's funny, when I talk or go on the forums and talk to motorhome people, they say, oh, you'll never see an electric motorhome. You and I both know at some point that will happen. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there, there will be the right chain of events of, of power sources. You'll see plug-ins at Flying J's and, and Love's. Uh, you'll see battery, uh, uh, battery capacities coming up where it can not only power the house, it can power the chassis and, and, and you know, the engine. How far are we away from that? I can envision on the conversion side, I can envision building a coach without a generator in the not too distant future. I can see that happening. There's a few components that I need to see uh, come, come out or have larger capacity before I make that leap. But where, um, where would the recharging ability come from? Would that come from the engine? Uh, to a certain extent, for sure, it would come from the engine. Uh, right now, we have 20,000 kW of charging capacity on the engine. Mm -hmm. So that's why we can charge, you know, essentially 36,000 kilowatts back in two and a half hours at the end of the day. I mean, it's driving down the road. So, so, so if you, you had it parked outdoors and you had your auto start on, instead of turning on a generator, it would just start the engine? Right, we would want to get to a position where we could be comfortable and confident that with normal usage of what you're going to be using in the coach, say two air conditioners and kitchen appliances and these types of things, that we wouldn't be re needing the engine to be starting in the middle of the night. You know, this would be something that would be happening during the day. How far so. away until the battery takes over the actual, or the battery comes in, in, in the engine is replaced by an electric motor? That part, you know, the, there's been so many billions of dollars that have been spent by all of the automobile manufacturers to get to this point that they're at now that, you know, they're saying within 10 years, if not sooner, you're going to see England without any vehicles that are petrol operated at all. They all have to be electric. Um, in this country, as far as that goes, to see a, a bus part of it, I would think within the next 10 years. I would tend to think so. It could be sooner. Now, what are your thoughts about autonomous or sending autonomous additional features? We already have the Prevo Aware system, and mm -hmm. as people know, I'm a huge fan of that. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, again, if, I'm, if, if somebody's shopping for a Prevo, I say you got to get, at le even if you're looking for a Prium, get 2000, a 2000 or 12 or later chassis. That Aware is just my favorite safety feature mm -hmm. on the bus today. But when is, what do you foresee? as the next stage of it is some sort of auto steering or lane keeping. I'm not talking about features where you walk back and, and get a drink or, or hit, hit the, uh, the head and yeah, then right. come back to it. But uh, seeing more autonomous safety features come into play. Lane departure is something that we've been asking for, for and been pushing for for a number of years. And, you know, we're a little bit in the constraints of what Prevo is going to be able to do through Volvo, of course. Mm -hmm and those, those parts and pieces being able to be moved into, into uh, the shell business as far as that goes. You know, it's, it's not always happening as quickly as we'd like to see it. So I would certainly hope that we could see those type of things in the next three years, maybe uh, hopefully less than that. Now why is it that you and I happen to really agree on that? But if I go online, people think that that would just be Armageddon. <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, anything that keeps us safer. Sure. You know, when you get to those pucker moments of a narrow bridge, it's nice to know that although your hand's on the wheel, that you have some, something that thinks a hundred times faster than you 
just making sure you're keeping it safely. Well, and we brought the 360 camera system into, uh, into our coaches on our two, 2016 model years. So we were the first ones to bring in a, uh, a bird's eye view, if you will, mm -hmm. of the exterior of the coach on a vehicle over 26 feet long back at that point in time. So we've been able to aid the driver in that aspect so and that again, you can go down I, the road. It, it, let me go into another because I've been seeing more and more coaches with it. I think it's a wonderful feature. They've been having it in cars, I guess seven or eight years sure. or longer. Uh, basically, there's, there's an image that, that shows mm -hmm. your coach from the top down. You have, I believe it's four cameras right. that are stitched together. They're basically 180 degree cameras. So you can at a glance, while at your screen, you can still see your rear view camera. Mm -hmm. You can see a split screen and you can see all around. So if you're going to take that lane change from the left to the right, you still use your mirrors. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not no a question. substitute for the mirrors, but you can see, is there that one car in your blind spot? Is Certainly. there that motorcycle? You and I are both mm -hmm. motorcycle folks. Is there that motorcycle in that little blind spot? Sure. It's a wonderful feature. Right, now, we can see almost a lane, if you will, outboard on, on the driver and passenger see, side. See, I'm all for that type of technology, mm -hmm. and I know I'm not going to get into this And it's this awful this nice to be able to do that when you're trying to maneuver around in a campground or a, a resort as well, that you're not you oh, know, catching it's anytime. Slow a, a piece of decoration or whatever. You know, I, you can't say I didn't see that tree anymore. Mm -hmm. right. and, 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 you know, a lot of people think I'm absolutely pro-technology, you know, in everything in my life, and I'm not. Um, I'm pro-technology where it makes sense. I think anything safety related that can do things better than a human being or give us more options, absolutely. Crestron, one day, that's a whole different segment, whether it's Crestron or other systems. I'm not going to pick on just them. I think there's a lot of room and improvement on the way that consumers can get involved and use them. Um, I know you're adding a lot of new features. Alexa, I know that you're probably somewhat crippled that you still have to wait for Crestron to open up more more routines or, or uh, open it up to where the user can add their own routines so when somebody wants to change something they don't have to bother you all the time that Crestron will still be the heart and I realize these companies have a hard time letting go and to let that happen but but we're seeing it we're seeing it and we have already got another uh, another uh, company that we're going to be debuting out here in the real soon that uh, will take us beyond the uh, the Alexa part of it and we won't have to have that aspect of those routines. Well, when you're ready, I'm not that far from yeah. you. Give me a call and come yeah. down and I'd like to get a demo yeah. of it. One thing back to adaptive or, or to, to adaptive uh, uh, new technology safety features, autonomous driving. When this becomes a reality, and, and granted, I realize that has to come from Prevo, what will that do to Liberty Sales? Uh, will that bring in new customers to you who might have had a little quench about driving a, a 45 foot 50,000 some odd pound motorhome? Yeah, I think it's going to, it, it probably eventually would for the entire market. Uh, I think that there's going to have to be a, a huge comfort level on the automobile side of it uh, to begin with. Mm -hmm. that, that the automobile part of it has been uh, working well and in, in the smaller scale size if you will that it's been working well and not having to have any issues and what have you because when you look at the scale of what we are at 45 feet and the size and what it takes to turn and all those different criteria it's a it's a huge huge aspect and I think that uh, people are going to have to have a big comfort level on that prior to it getting to to this level if you go back to you know this series I've been running for close to three years, it started off with trying to learn how to drive a motorhome if you don't own one. Mm -hmm. There's no place to go. And I think that as these features, had they had these features three years ago, I would have jumped in to the pit much faster. Now, um, I know we are running really long in this segment, but you're just such an interesting guy to talk to. Um, Liberty, you, know, you only build H3 chassis at this point. Is that correct? Right. But you also are a dealer for Emerald coaches mm -hmm. on their X3s. How does that work? Uh, the Emerald uh, situation on the X3 platform, uh, it's not that we don't choose to build on the X3, it's just that we offer so many different floor plans and variations between double slides, triples, quads, and those floor plans associated with those and the different floor plans about it. And we are building 14 units a year. So 
to throw an X3 at the at the shop and say, okay, fine, we want to do that, it it would you know look like it came from a different planet right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we would have to start building a number of those in a row to to make sense. So when I was approached to take on the Emerald line, then that made more sense for us as far as that goes. And John Walker has he's got as much passion for this industry as as my brother and I do, as we've always had. And um, uh, we just got a new 2019 in uh, last week, and you want to talk about something that's evolved. I mean, that coach has really, really made some uh, evolution moves in the last four years, and we're really excited about that. And there'll be an H part of that coming soon as well. So, so, so that platform Yeah, because I've been hearing rumblings. Again, dude, this is, I can get it straight from the horse's mouth right now. I'm going to say that Johnny Walker's going to be killing off his outlaw line, which was his H3. I don't know. I'm sure you can tell me if that's true or not. It, it's going to be replaced with the new brand. It's going to be the Emerald H3. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be selling both? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Now, how will the Emerald, I guess the Emerald H3 is going to be competing against Liberty. Is this going to be a pure, are they going to be the buying for the buck line? You're going to be the, I, mean, I can't think of a better word, a glitz or opulent line? Uh, the, the difference between the two coaches uh, is, is miles apart. And... The way they, the only way that the the whole business model works for John is to do a streamlined interior conversion. That's the only way that it works. So the price point is you're going to get a lot of G whiz and new, if you will, for the money. There's no question about it. Um, it won't be at, at all ever to the level of what Liberty Coach is and. He admits that, and it's a, uh, it's a direction that we both know needs to keep going that way for it to make any sense for him. Otherwise, the the way that his shop is set up, it just would never work. If somebody comes in, they want to get a liberty. And I realize you hear this one state more than anybody else. When I win the lottery, <laughs> well, if they just get the small pot, then, you know, when I said small pot, you know, any lottery would be great. Then the Emerald H3 might be a good solution or an X3 and then as they work up or they realize they really uh, this is something they want to invest their life in then do you see as Liberty as a logical step up? Yeah, the 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 reason for going to Emerald and to to, to, to have them uh, as another option uh, was I wanted to have another set of eyeballs look at Liberty Coach and it's done all of that because we're transitioning people from Class A uh, world to the Prevo world, there are people out there that do not like to buy used. They only want to have new. They don't want to make that big leap up to, uh, to a Liberty as far as that goes or some of the other manufacturers that are out there. So the Emerald fits that budget at this time. And then they, we have had a number of the Emeralds that we have sold, the customers that have bought those coaches have transitioned from that to use Liberty or brand new Liberty. So it's it's done what I had envisioned it okay. to do. Speaking of budget, you do not put prices on your new listings mm -hmm. online. Uh, as my regular viewers know, I've given the RVIA, the RV companies, just a lot of grief that people know it's 28 to 32 percent or so off the suggested retail is day in day out pricing. If somebody wants to buy a new Liberty or a new Emerald from you, how do they, without trying to get into a hardcore negotiation, how do they figure out what is the fair price to pay? Well, the reason that we don't put pricing on there is because of the fact that I have uh, believed, as our sales team has believed through the years, that not all Prevos are created equal. And people want to just price shop, and because it says Prevo on the front, they should all be created equal, and they're not. And so we like to have that dialogue either through you know online dialogue or by placing a phone call and having a person to person conversation so that we can you know get them to a point of knowing okay why is it this much more money so that's why we don't do it um, when we get into some of our used pieces that are older as far as that goes and through my other company the the motorhome exchange we do put pricing on and as far as that That's a exchange, is pre-owned right. units right. you've taken on right. trade or on consignment. Correct. Okay. Right. Okay. And they're typically, they're going to be 
another brand of Prevo conversion, or it's going to be outside of a 10-year production level for Liberty Coach. Okay. Will be with the exchange. Uh, last question: mm -hmm. Service. You have uh, you have your full facilities, your manufacturing facilities outside of Chicago, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. And then Stewart is that that's basically sales, but that's just basic service. You don't do cabinetry or or if you have some major house issues, does, does the bus does the bus have to go back up to Chicago or it how depends. Do you work? We uh, we do we can do upholstery work. We can do some cabinet work. Um, the uh, we are a full service center for Prevo as well, so we do uh, a number of uh, service aspects for Prevo. Um, the uh, the manufacturing part in North Chicago, primarily that's what they do. It's in a manufacturing position. We have service. We service Liberty Coach product there. Uh, uh, in Stewart, Florida, Liberty Coach of Florida, we service everything that we sell, plus whatever, you know, if somebody calls up, they're on the road, whatever, and they may not own a, a Prevo, or they may have heard of us and they want to come in for service, we can do that as well. Okay, are you 24-7 on your phone support? I am 24-7. Okay, so the somebody, only, was, right. if, say, if I bought a Liberty tomorrow, and at 3 a.m., boom, something goes wrong, someone, will, someone knowledgeable Yes. Of my coach will answer the phone. Yes. Will they have access to the info on my coach? Yes. When I say this widget doesn't work, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. We That's have a, a very depth. We've got a multi-level uh, service situation as far as that goes. And as an, it, it doesn't matter. I have people call me all the time. The only time, realistically, that you're not going to be able to get a hold of me is if the plane is taken off or landing and the Wi-Fi has been turned off on American Airlines. I mean, otherwise, I'm. You mean completely. you don't have your Liberty Jet? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, no, we. Okay. None of that. <laughs> if everybody buys a coach today, if just ten percent of the viewers buy one, then then you'll get a jet. Okay. Right. Now I'm teasing. No, I said, of course. No. You've been more than gracious with your time, and let Thank me you. tell you, you know, we're here at Heartside Grove. This is the busiest man in town, and and I'm gonna, I believe there's 180 motor coaches here. You know, this is Class A in a, a motor coach resort. Uh, I was talking to some friends, and and by far. It appears that Liberty is a dominant line here. I've also seen your service go-kart go around. You have a big 18-wheeler here mm -hmm. that you're taking care of. You know, I've seen other brands do it too. I'm not here to talk about other brands, but I've seen some brands, it's very noticeable that they're not here. That's a good thing. If people want more information on Liberty Coach, what should they do? Well, there's the website has very in-depth, which is www.LibertyCoach.com. Mm -hmm. uh, they can call in 800-554-9877. That'll get you to either the manufacturing facility or uh, to the sales facility as far as that goes. My personal email, Frank at LibertyCoach.com. You can get a hold of me and I can direct stuff wherever it needs to go or I can have a conversation with anybody. I mean, I, I am busy. There's no question about it, but I always take time to answer phone calls whatever time of the day it is. I, I mean, try and make sure that, or emails. Guy in town. You, you, you had a, a get-together last night. You, yeah. you had probably 80 or 100 people there or so. Um, you're very much in demand, and you, you, you put yourself out there. Not all motor coach companies do that, and you're talking to your existing owners, people who just people like me who just have questions and did not bring their checkbook, and that, that's just a, a really good thing. Well, and I also do deliveries. There's, there's times yeah. where I do deliveries personally myself to customers. So I, I don't want to say names. I met just a really great couple down here. They traded for one brand, mm -hmm. and that that they just made the decision a few weeks ago, and boom, mm -hmm. I believe they saw this coach before. Yep. You delivered up here, you personally did the delivery. That's just a very cool thing. And I don't know, if, I, I, I'm probably a little bit more detailed than that, I'd have to take more time, but it's so great when people can do it. I talked to them after having two nights in the coach, and they are just thrilled with it. Thank you. Um, again, news. thank you thank so you. much for Appreciate your time. It. You thank have you. his contact information, remember. The easiest way to keep posted with my new stories, videos, or whatever is to simply like me on Facebook at facebook.com slash gadgetguru. And if you like this video, you're going to like this one. And if you like that one, you're going to like one of these. That's it for now. I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Park.